When you have your girls, you're never alone. You get together for coffee, maybe to work out, or just to laugh. We created Hey Girl, just for you. Can't wait for you to join us. Hey everybody, welcome to Hey Girl. I'm your girl, Kim with an E, and this is episode 77. Now, if you are joining us for the first time, I want to let you know that Hey Girl is a safe space where you can share your experiences and be affirmed. Let's face it, life can be complex and sometimes overwhelming. That's why we believe in the power of conversations, because knowing you're not alone is what helps you get through. And you are not alone. We are not alone today because we're all here together. So be sure to hit the like and share button. Invite someone to join you today. We are going to have an incredible show. Now, of course, you know that our theme in the past month was women in STEM, but this month we are shifting gears. And I am so excited because all month long we'll be talking to women in the arts and creative fields. Listen, we are making a case for creative work. Now, Don't get me wrong, I know and we all know how important STEM is and to have women in STEM is fantastic. We definitely want to affirm those who are taking that route. But as we talked about last week, too often people, not just women, anyone who wants to go into an artistic career, something in the arts, it's often not encouraged, it's not affirmed. We want our kids to be doctors and scientists. We don't so much want them to go into the arts. But why not? What if that's your gift? And so that's what we're going to be talking about all month long. Like I said, you want to make sure you like and follow this page and be sure to share this live because we're going to have a great conversation today. So come on in, say hello in the comments. Tell me where you are joining us from. We are already in the month of October. I cannot believe it. Fall weather is fully in place. It's it's cooling down. And I am, I am actually enjoying Now You know, I am not a cold weather person, but the fall is is actually kind of nice. It's not too hot, not too cold. Got that in between weather happening. So how are you enjoying the weather where you are? Hopefully you are having an enjoyable week or have had an enjoyable week, I should say, and enjoying the weekend and getting some much needed rest. Now, before I introduce you to our guest for today, I want to uh, I want to share a few announcements with you. Now, last week I was telling you about a student at A and M University who is going to be doing a book signing of a book that she wrote. I'm so proud of her. She's still just an undergraduate student, not even an English major, which we might need to work on that. But her name is Trinity Poplar. And she has written a children's book, which is so cute. She's done the artwork for it also. And the title is Comparison. And she's going to be doing a book signing and reading from her book at our writing center, my writing center, Alabama a and University. So if you are local, I would encourage you to check out Trinity's book um, and possibly come by for the book signing if you're in the city. Uh, so proud of the work she's doing, and she represents what this month is all about, doing creative work. And, and she's starting early, which is so good. She's not even waiting until she's done with school. And so I'm proud of what she's accomplished and what I know she will continue to do. And we want to certainly affirm our young people when they are following their dreams. So I'm curious to know, for those of you who are, who are joining us, how many of you out there have some desire to do some creative work. Maybe your main gig isn't in the creative field, but you've always thought about writing a book or you enjoy photography. What would you say is your gift? Tell me, share in the comments, what is, what is your passion outside of your day-to-day job if it's not already in a creative field? And I uh, also want to let you know, while I'm waiting for you to put your answers in the comments, have another announcement for you. We have added to the justkim.net page. If you have not already subscribed for our weekly newsletter, be sure to go there. You can even go right now if you'd like, www.justkim.net. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter. And as I said, I promise I will not spam you. Honey, I don't have time to read emails either. But every week we try to motivate and encourage one another. And I just wanna have a little bit more of a personal connection with each one of you, share some insights and information, 
upcoming things that we have in store. So be sure to check that out. Now, I asked you to put in the comments what your gift is or what your passion is, maybe if it's in a creative field, especially. And then my next question that I want you to think about is who maybe has discouraged you from pursuing that thing? Have you ever been discouraged from pursuing it? Um, and if so, you may not want to talk about it, but just say yes, if you can identify with that, because that is what we're talking about today as well. Now, I am so honored to have our guest for today, and I'm going to introduce her to you. If you have not already shared this live, now is the time to do it because we have a super special guest who is going to share a bit of her life and career in a creative field with us today. Soprano Angela Brown's multi-genre career has been lauded on the front page of the New York Times, CNN, CBS, Oprah Magazine, and Reader's Digest, with classical and pop engagements spanning six continents. Angela has graced the leading opera and symphonic stages of the world. Her most recent endeavor is the founding of Morning Brown Incorporated, a nonprofit with the mission of bridging the gap between accessible live music programs and underserved individuals, schools, and communities. Drawing on the success of Angela's groundbreaking show, Opera from a Sister's Point of View, Morning Brown Incorporated works to bring cultural experiences and awareness to cultural deserts. In spring 2020, she launched a new podcast with classical music indie and co-host Joshua Thompson titled Melanated Moments in Classical Music that was named Best Black Music Podcast of 2020 by the Black Podcasting Awards. Honey, she's the real deal. Please welcome, would you, my guest for today, Miss Angela Brown. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? I am blessed and highly favored, honey. Thank you for having me on your show. Oh, it, we are blessed and highly favored to have you. Thank you for being here. And wow, what a bio that is. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you've been busy. <laughs> you know, I've been, and I've been blessed. Man, I've enjoyed every moment I have enjoyed. So, you know, my father always said, if you find something you love to do, you'll never work a day in your life. And I don't feel like I've had any work to do just yet. <laughs> Wow, that is fantastic. <clears throat> I mean, that's like living the dream for real to to do what you actually love for a living. Now, I don't know how many people out there have heard your voice, but I feel like those who haven't heard need to hear just a little taste of what you're talking about. So let's go right. let's put a little clip before we get into this conversation. Let's give them a little some some little some some. <laughs> stuff. I mean, you don't even have to love opera music to appreciate just the magnificence of your voice. I mean, it's beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. You didn't even get to the good part, but that's all right. I'm sure uh -oh, you got to cut, cut it off too soon. But that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. We'll get it together. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll come back to it. We'll come back. Just give them a little taste, a little taste. Yeah, um, just a little taste. 
<laughs> but clearly you're the real deal. And I, I'm just curious to know, did you always know that you were going to be a singer? Was that something that was in your heart from early on? Well, I always knew that I loved singing and being on stage. Um, I didn't know what type of music I would be singing, what genre of music. But um, yeah, I always knew that I would do something in the arts. With music, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, even from a little girl, were you the one with the, with the hairbrush and you're in the mirror? And the microphone. Oh, okay. You want to go there? Yes, honey. <laughs> I was the one that I remember circa 196, no, 75 or whatever. I was a little girl standing on the side of my um, uh, house and uh, we had a trash can and a couple of my friends from the, uh, the, the, the neighborhood and I was singing up, up and away. My beautiful blue. Oh, yeah, honey. It was fabulous. Okay. I was fifth dimensions all the way. And then okay. I remember being in first grade and having to audition for the, um, oh, what was it? The, uh, the, the first grade talent competition okay. or something. Like, and yeah. they wanted three people to audition. So I was standing up there and we were doing, I'm a little teapot short and stout. Well, I could get the music because I had the music in me, right? But yeah. the steps were a little harder. Honey, <laughs> my teacher was like, after I tried three times to get those little steps together, she was like, baby, you just go on and sit down. I bowed from that moment on. Oh, no one was going to tell sit down again. Honey, I always knew I had a place on stage. I just didn't know when and how and what it was going to look like. So <laughs> That is so funny. Okay, so I asked the question early on, you know, for those who are watching, what is your gift? And, and have you ever been discouraged? from using your gift. So what about you? Okay, first grade, the teacher didn't want you to, cause you didn't have the steps right. But even, you know, moving on as you decided this was what you wanted to, to pursue. Did you have people telling you, honey, you can't make any money in that field or you don't need to pursue music. You need to do something more practical or did you ever get that message from teachers or parents? I or- got the message, but mm-hmm. I never got the message to stop. Um, I got the message that, yes, it could be a little more difficult. Uh, My father was definitely the one that said, need to have something else to fall back on. Maybe something that will complement the music for when, (laughs) because now I tell my students, whenever I go around doing my Diva Teach series, I tell them to always have something to fall back on. You might think that if you have your plan A and you're thinking about a plan B, that means you won't do your plan A. I'm sorry, you better have a plan B. Uh, because the music industry is like, it's like being an athlete, being a singer. You know, you have your moment. And then, you know, you have the, the peaks and the valleys. It's the peaks mm-hmm. and the valleys. And we are vocal athletes. And there comes a time when you have to start doing something different. But I was never, mm-hmm. ever, ever uh, dissuaded against uh, following my bliss. Because regardless of how much money you can make as a doctor, a lawyer, uh, uh, whatever it is in, in the world that makes a lot of money, mm-hmm. if not happy, you're going to end up not liking mm-hmm. that job or your life. So you may as well follow your bliss and let God go ahead and fill in the details. We okay. worry so much about the details instead of just doing the work and letting yeah. him bless. So I oh, say man. my parents let me do the work. Good. And they gave me their blessing. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that is so good. And 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 it's true. I know so many people who have pursued path in the in the direction or in this in the area that their parents said to or that other people said to and they were miserable. I mean, doctors, lawyers, I mean, they just they do it anyway because it's what they're supposed to do. And then and they you know, like that they, money, that, that gratification of the money. Now, and yeah. they spent a lot of money to get these degrees. And yeah. they're they're fabulous doctors and stuff, but they're not happy. Uh, right. I mean, then they get halfway through, they're 40, 50 years old, and they're like, so they quit or they end up doing something entirely mm-hmm. different anyway. So it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's 
you can't run away from whatever it is that's yeah. in your heart. Right? So I, I definitely would say find something that complements music so that you, yeah. because you will have to cycle out of this. And mm-hmm. we go get that to that later on in the interview, yeah. but you do find yourself moving towards your act too. And we'll talk yeah. about that later. And, and that's okay too. That's okay. Um, so what was, so I, what we have in common is that we both attended Oakwood. It was college, now it's university. Um, and Oakwood is, is a great place to cultivate uh, the music. You know, mu- Oakwood is known for its wonderful music. Would you say that Oakwood was, was good preparation for the work that you do now? Yes. And the reason why I say yes is that I was able to stretch my creative uh, cloth over a canvas that I didn't know what I was going to paint. Mm. It gave me, they gave, Oakwood gave me the opportunity to create uh, a group. I created uh, positive images. I was able to travel with the Aeolians, uh, the world famous Aeolians. I yes. was able to travel also with um, uh, Elder uh, Trevor Fraser, who was over the recruitment uh, program at uh, Oakwood at the time. And so I was always, every weekend, I don't remember, but being on that campus uh, twice uh, during at least my senior year, you know, at Oakwood, yeah. because I was always traveling, either with, with recruitment or with the uh, ensembles. And that gave me the foundation for what I ended up doing with my life, yeah. which was traveling the world, singing on the stages of the world. So yes, yeah. Oakwood was very, very fundamental in uh, this career for me. In the, in the development, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't know about Oakwood. It's kind of a little secret, but it's becoming less so because I think more and more oh, yeah. good things are coming out of Oakwood. And I hear a lot of people will, will ask me about this choir they've heard about. You know, the Aeolians, <laughs> of course, are getting a lot yeah. of attention. Say, what the is it, the aliens? What's that about? Right, the right aliens exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, so what would you say then was your first big break once you graduated and, and went out into the world? How did it how did it start for you? Well, I would say my first big break was at the Metropolitan Opera in 2004. Oh. Now, wow. I graduated Oakwood in 1991. OK, I think you were coming into Oakwood. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> then I went to Indiana University. And studied with Jen, uh, with um, Virginia Zayani. I studied at Oakwood with Ginger Beasley, who would take her studio to Indiana University to have master classes with Madam Virginia Zayani. And once Ms. Zayani heard me, she said, Ginger Angela is not a mezzo-soprano, because I was a mezzo at the time. She said, she is a Verdian soprano. Angela, when you are done with Ginger, I take you in my studio. So then I immediately went back to Oakwood, started to hone my craft, doing singing more dramatic repertoire. Then once I graduated Oakwood, I went to Indiana, studied with Mrs. Uh, Zayani. I remember going into her one day. And I said, Miss Ziani, I don't know if opera is going to be my thing because it still wasn't feeling good to me because I thought that I was going to be a singing evangelist when I went to Oakwood. I wanted to study Bible instructorship and be a singing evangelist. But now I say that God has given me bigger pulpits. And so I still wasn't feeling... the, the new clothes that I was wearing okay. because I had sung every genre of music but classical music. And I remember saying to her, I'm not sure about this opera career. She looked me dead in my face and she said, Angela, if you want to be the next Aretha Franklin, go. You need no more <laughs> lessons. But if you want to be the best Verdian soprano this world has ever known, you must work, girl. And that's what I continued to do. And I ended up Leaving um, IU, I was beginning to to sing at a, at a, uh, all around regionally uh, with different symphony orchestras and stuff. And I won the Metropolitan Opera Competition in 1997 when I was at IU. And that was the beginning of the big break. But it wasn't until 2004 
that I made my Metropolitan Opera debut as Aida. And I was on the front page of the New York Times. There, there, there she go. Uh, <laughs> I was on the front page of the New York Times. I was in Oprah. I was in Ebony. I was in Essence. Uh-huh. I was in USA Today. I was in Right Reader's Digest. I was in Psychology Today. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it, it got around. It was the best, uh, 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 how would you say the best? Uh, oh, I can't remember. I can't think of the word advertisement for a career okay. that I could have yeah. ever had. And so that was my big break. And then things just rolled on from there. So was it all up, 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 up? I mean, you it seems like you've just had an amazing life. Um, have there been any big disappointments? Oh, you, you know, up, 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 up can be for two years. Oh, okay. And then life happens, you know, Mm -hmm. even eagles have to rest. Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of these big entertainers, they come out, they do that thing, then they go back in. And Mm -hmm. that kind of, it's been an ebb and flow. It's been an Mm -hmm. ebb and flow, had peaks and valleys through this whole career. I try to always see the bright side of anything. If I'm having a rest, then I need to rest, okay? Because I'm preparing for the next big thing that God would have me do. But yeah, there have been disappointments in the career when you don't get a part that you wanted. Or, you know, I had both of my parents pass away in 2008. People say, well, what do you do when you're on the road? And something tragic like that happens. It happens. And you come off the road, you do what you have to do, and you grieve on the stages. You continue on. But it, it it's just life. It's, it's, it's life. And my parents left me at a time that I knew that they knew they had given me all they could give me. So they felt comfortable to rest. But it was kind of rough 2008 because both of them let me, left me in I January. And in October, my mother's anniversary of her death is coming up October 31st. So, yeah. It's in the same year. They're with me. I feel them. I feel them. And and all of their wisdom, I wear it. Yeah. Yeah. So for those who may be listening and and aspiring to be singers themselves or, or have a career in entertainment, what advice would you give them? I mean, how do how do you make that work? How do you how do you do it? Well, um, there is no magic bullet. It's better to take the stairs than trying to get on the elevator. Uh, you have to hone this craft and you got to love it, regardless of what genre that you decide to go in, dance, music, rap, soul, pop, whatever. You know, you have to love it and you have to want it want to do it cheap to free sometimes. You have to have a passion that burns in your belly. And you have to use your good intuition. God gave it to you. Use your good intuition about what is good for you. Because nobody can tell you that once you go to to university and you have all these degrees behind your name and now you want to go and sing. A degree doesn't necessarily equal a career, you Mm -hmm. know? But Mm -hmm. getting the degrees keeps you in school to learn more, you know, so that if Mm -hmm. the career don't happen, you can teach, you know. So Mm -hmm. it is true that those that don't do teach, but that doesn't mean that they they're not good. That just means the opportunity didn't happen for them at that time. I know people that have taught first and then started to have a career. So, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. it's different for everybody. It's different for everyone. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes with artistic air, uh, fields, you know, art and singing and things like that, it's 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 a little bit subjective, right? So so the audience may love you or they may not, and and some people may think they can sing, and a lot of people may think they cannot. <laughs> you know, there are people who want. You see the people on uh, American Idol who get up and say, "Oh, I've always wanted to be a singer," and then they start singing, and everybody's like, "Oh no." Um, <laughs> so for those aspiring singers out there who think this is what they are called to do, how, how would you, what advice would you give them about knowing what, being honest with themselves and what they really should do? So, you know, not everyone who wants to sing should, but how does that person who thinks they, they should be singing, how do they, how do they recognize that 
in themselves that maybe this isn't what they should be doing? I will answer that question this way. If everybody is telling you, honey, you need to take some voice lessons, you're a little flat on that note, you're screaming, I can see the veins popping, it doesn't sound very good. Everybody can't be lying to you, okay? Right. So yeah. good intuition. Everybody can't be lying to you, but you do mm-hmm. have haters. Mm-hmm. Right. You do have haters, especially yeah. when you know that you have polished this this, this lump of coal that has become a diamond and you're putting facets in it, you'll have people that will try to knock you down and dim your shine, but don't you let them. If mm-hmm. you know that you know that you know that you can do this and you're willing to put in the hard work and do the auditions and go to the, the coachings and the voice lessons and travel and do, do it. Mm-hmm. Do it. Why mm-hmm. not? Follow your list. Be happy because it's better to have done it and say, I, 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 at least I tried than yeah. to be sitting back safe in some cushy job, miserable mm-hmm. and making everybody else around you miserable. <laughs> you know, so be yeah. happy, be happy. So try it and, and do, do your best to hone it. But, but also listen to the critics with a grain of salt, I guess, because some may just yeah. be trying to tear you down. But, but if, like you said, if everyone's kind of saying the same thing, there may be something the to The same it. thing. The same thing. Yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's the rub that's there. The yeah. There might be something too. Mm. <laughs> it's, a hard, it's a hard truth, but we, we might have to just face the facts, right? Um, so you have been recently doing some some work, particularly for audiences who are not uh, not really, what's the word, prepared for the kind of cultural artistry that you you provide audiences, those who have not really been exposed to opera mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. Um, can you talk a little bit about what, what your, the whole sister's point of view? <laughs> you are about. talking about my baby that I created about 20 years ago, 20, yeah. Uh, And it's opera from a sister's point of view. Uh, The reason why it ever became a brainchild of mine is that I knew that the opera singers, uh, opera singers, opera companies weren't gonna be checking for a sister forever, okay? Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to be able to support myself. So I put my entrepreneurial hat on Every artist out here needs to have some entrepreneurship in their blood because you are your own commodity, okay? And you are your best seller, okay? So I created the show, Opera from a Sister's Point of View, that demystifies opera for audiences that normally wouldn't go. I was singing on the stages of the world and I was looking out in audiences and I was seeing very few people that looked like me. And I was thinking at first it was just a black thing. So I was going to the churches and I was going here in the community and stuff and saying power to the people that, you know, let you know that black people can, you know, sing opera too. There's people that look just like you on these stages. And as I started to do that show more and more and more and more, I found out that white folks don't like opera either. It's, <laughs> it's about being exposed. It's about uh, being exposed and diversity. And there is great diversity in opera. I mean, I don't care how many people you paint up. Aida is an opera about two warring African nations, Mm. Ethiopia Mm. and Egypt. Okay? Okay. Um, And it's a love triangle triangle going on in there. Then you have operas like Carmen. That's a Hispanic or Latino opera. Then you Mm. have operas like Tosca. In Italian opera, you have to, uh, operas like um, Turandot and Madame Butterfly that are Asian subject operas. And Il Trovatore has some native Indian in it. So you can find yourself an opera. You just have to make the decision or the choice to enjoy it. Don't tell me that you don't like mushrooms until you try it. Take a <laughs> taste. Tap, buy a ticket. Read the playbill. Find Mm. out what the synopsis of the show is. Then sit down and watch the beauty 
that I hope will come off of those stages. Because yeah. in every major city and in some small ones, there are opera companies and uh, symphony orchestras and all kinds of other cultural things that we can spend our our uh, expendable dollars on. It's not just yeah. sports. And uh, and sports are fabulous. Honey, I'm all about the sports. But yeah. go on, something else to your palate. Why not? Mm-hmm. Take a chance on you. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like what you're talking about is really just broad. We, we need to broaden our perspective and broaden our horizons and expose ourselves to things that we would not normally because you never know what you might gain from that. And yeah. life is short. Why right. be short sighted? Go yeah. and make your, your, you know, everything broad and plain. Go from like in the Wizard of Oz when Dorothy leaves Kansas and the tornado comes and she kills yeah. the witch. Wicked witch, and she opens that door, and it's you're out of the woods, you're out of the dark, you're out of the night. I mean, it went from black and white to technicolor. That's what culture and the arts does for people. It takes them from a dull existence to something that can feed their souls and uplift them and take it from black and white to technicolor. Uh, that is so perfect. You answered the question before I could even ask it. I was going to say, you know, make a case for creative work and, and you just did that. So never mind. What I want to do is really quickly um, take a look at this clip of you talking to children about okay. this, this idea of broadening perspective. Misconception about opera is that it's only geared towards elitist audiences. Anybody can really enjoy an opera if they choose to. My mission today is to introduce opera to those who normally don't like opera. Opera is about rich and poor people. It's about brown and black people. It's about yellow and white people. I hope you'll learn a little something today and you'll go away from here loving opera, okay? Because this is opera as Dean Dixon almost had it right. It's not a sister's point of view, it's a sister's point of view. All right, you got the lean back on. I think that it's really cool that she's going and telling people that you don't have to be rich to do opera. You can be anyone to do opera. I think that it was really amazing that she could sing opera like that because I have never heard opera in that tone and pitch before. The next aria I would like to sing for you is from Tosca. And the heroine's name is Florida Tosca. And she told us what was happening in the opera. It's really cool to see how the characters act out the scenes. And I'll be singing the lullaby. It takes nothing to understand the story. And hopefully you'll enjoy the beautiful sounds coming off the stage and immersed into a fantasy world. Opera from a sister's point of view is what we're talking about in our way. That is so cool. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I love the kids. I love the kids. They're, they're so articulate. They're like, oh, I like the way she, her tone. I like her tone. <laughs> That's so nice. So, so when you do the, when you, when you're going around selling the whole system's point of view, is it, is it always children or is it children and adults both that you usually are, are it's ministering whole to? whole family. It is yeah. a ministry. It's yeah. the whole family, because if you don't get the parents, the kids can't come by themselves. But oh. I start at the school and then they go home. Uh-huh. And a lot of times when I'm doing opera from a sister's point of view, I'm doing it in conjunction with an appearance that I'm okay. giving in the city, either with the orchestra or with the opera company. Uh, but now I do it uh, separately as well. And the kids will go home and say, Mama, uh, this lady, she was singing opera and she's black and she's going to be <laughs> singing to such and such. Can we go? And a lot of times the school will have tickets for them, you know, if it's an economic situation. So, yes, I say get the kids because when they leave out of that auditorium and they're going, woo, woo, and they're mocking me, I know I've got them. I got know em. I've got them. <laughs> That's so good. And that is so true. If my child comes home talking about something, excited about it, then I want to, I'm interested in it immediately. Uh, so that's, that's fantastic. That is really great. Um, so this has been so good. I, I'm wondering, well, I know there's something very recently that happened 
that we need to talk about. But I, I want to make sure there's nothing else, no other points that you feel like you need to make. I feel like you've made some good ones before we before we announce the big, the most recent big thing. <laughs> Well, I want to talk about my foundation, uh, yeah. Morning Brown, that brings culture oh, yes. to cultural yes. deserts. Now, mm. I found out that Chicago has cultural deserts. And I was like, mm. but it's Chicago, the mecca of culture. Mm. You have symphony, you have opera, you have ballet, you have every yeah. theater, you have everything there. But there are people that don't have access oh, to those things. Yeah. Either yeah. because, and, and a lot of it is, is uh, they either don't feel like they belong or it's yeah. strictly economical, you know, economics. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I started uh, Morning Brown to go into communities where, and to underserved communities where I do my show offer from a sister's point of view and, um, or either I'll do uh, 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 my Diva Teach series where I talk about my career and give um, helpful hints and life anecdotes to young aspiring opera singers. Um, I also do uh, master classes where I'll go in and I'll work with uh, young young people. And I do a show that can be uh, opera from a sister's point of view can be fit to a school period or for an evening performance. So yes, I sing for the community, the children, anybody that wants me to come. I'm there. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's so great. The whole um, bringing culture to the, the the cultural deserts because it also goes back to the point of people needing to be educated, and and it, it really starts with that. It's it's not just education that you get in school. It's educating that you need of your of broadening your mind and to, as to what's exactly. possible. Exactly. Because what you're also going to do is is touch people who maybe felt an urge to do something, but didn't know what that was or what it was, what was even possible. So just, uh -huh. just exposing them to what's possible could open up so many pop possibilities. That's true. Just, you know, taking the scales from their eyes and yeah. seeing that there's a whole world out there that they haven't even yeah. touched. Why leave mm -hmm. this earthly plane and not have enjoyed it all? You know? I, so. Yeah. That's Even great. though the life after is going to be much better. But still, God put us here for a reason. Yes. Enjoy yourself. Yes. In the meantime, right. In Occupy and so become. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So you've been doing a lot of amazing things. And as a result, <laughs> the most recent amazing thing, you took a trip up to Nashville. And, and what's going on up there? I got to make a drive up to Nashville because... Drum roll. Well, let me tell you, let me give you a little story and then we'll get to drum roll. The reason why I was even in Nashville this past weekend is I am the um, ambassador, the performance ambassador for the 105 HBCU Voices. I've messed that whole name up. It's the 105 <laughs> Voices of HBCUs. And I am their their. Um, cultural or their their uh, performance ambassador. And I was giving my uh, talk to um, the young people that were doing a voice competition. So I was there and they, they had this whole weekend going. And I had been told that I was in the new museum in uh, Nashville called the National um, Museum of African American Music. And I had a chance to go up and finally see my exhibit. And I wow. was so honored, so, That's so cool. very honored and humbled yes. to, and it made me cry. It made me cry. Because oh, I was like, sure. somebody was paying attention. Somebody was paying attention. Yes. Because I was just going on with my life and doing, and following my bliss. And yeah. God let me be able to smell my flowers while I can yet smell them. To have my flowers while I can yet smell them. So, yeah. it's, a it's a blessing. We need the, we need the hand clap uh, uh, sound effect, Amanda. That is, that's just, <laughs> kudos to you. Kudos to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That is so exciting. That actually brings me to a question I didn't ask, but I meant to. And mm -hmm. that is, 
how groundbreaking have you been, meaning you as a Black woman singing opera? How many spaces have you had to operate in where people who looked like you, I mean, in terms of other singers, not just who was in the audience. And, and did that ever, was that ever a problem? Like, did you ever feel, were you ever made to feel like you weren't supposed to be there? Like they were kind of doing you a favor, letting you be on that <laughs> thing? That, did you ever now that's the have question, that? girl. That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> no favors. I was doing them a favor because of I course. said, yes, I'm coming. Because these yeah. two little pieces of uh, flesh in my throat, God gave me the talent. And he said, Angela, go do your thing. And your talent will make a way for you. I have never, ever, ever, ever felt like I was not, that I didn't belong. Now, have I ever felt not wanted, but I've never felt felt like I didn't belong there because actually, I got this from my daddy. He he would he would always uh, test me. He was like, "Oh, Angie, you can't do that." Tell me, I can't do something, and it made me do it. You know, <laughs> and I did it to perfection. So, or at least to to my best ability. So. Um, I just always love performing and I love people and I don't look for trouble for tomorrow, especially because today got enough. So I just deal with what's on my plate for the day. And then the next day I try to forget what happened. I ain't going to say I'm walking around here floating and, 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 uh, uh, singing with the liar and I'm just this angel, but I try not to stress myself out. And uh, people are going to be people. And they're going to be the ones that are not, everybody's not going to love you. They didn't all love Jesus, you know? Mm -hmm. So I have had a good run. And if he allows me, I'm going to keep on, keep on running. Keep on running. Come on in, Angie. Yeah, yeah. So so clearly you have been an exception quite often. Like there's not a lot. and, And this is, I'm asking this also because of course, you're in that museum in in Nashville because, you know, you're you you're kind of like groundbreaking. You're you're paving a way for 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 others who hopefully it won't be yeah. so unusual going forward. Yeah, it's not unusual now. That's one of the reasons why I do opera from a sister's point of view. There are so many of us black opera singers out mm-hmm. here doing the dang thing from. Back in the 1800s, Cicerita Jones. Then you have, of course, I, mean, I have to bring it on up. So, I mean, there are so many more, even between her and Marian Anderson. Then even yeah. between Marian Anderson and Leontine Price. Then even between Mary, uh, Price, Jesse Norman. Then even between Jesse Norman and Angela Brown. There mm. are so many of us out here. But we don't mm. always get the shine. God mm-hmm. just... Gave me the opportunity because he knew that I was going to then use the light that he gave me because he's the great light. I'm the lesser light in this in this business. And I'm able to then shine the light that I have on others because I do a show in addendum to opera from a sister's point of view called opera from a sister's point of view generation next, where I shine a light on the young up and coming black opera singers of today. So, Mm. you know, I give them an opportunity to sing on my platform because people that Mm. will come and see me will then get to see them too. And then it just keeps going. So there are a lot of us out here, honey, a lot, a lot, but they, we just don't always get the shine. Okay. That, that's, that's so important to know. (laughs) <laughs> because I'm like, oh, you're like, I'm counting on one hand. You must not be, it can't be many because I haven't heard of them. Not that I, you know, and I probably am one of the ones who need to be more educated about opera and all of that as well. But but I think what you just said is really key because a, a lot of what we don't know may also be that they're not given the opportunity to be known. And so all the more reason why you need to be here in order to bring attention and light to those who aren't getting it. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And I'm very, very happy to have been on this platform to be able to spread the word. (laughs) I'm so glad as well. So we need to make sure that that we like, follow and and, and like and follow all of her 
platform. So how, how best can we keep up with what you have going on? Well, uh, there's my uh, agent's platform, J-E-J Artists with an S dot com. There's Angela M. Brown dot com. There is uh, Morning Brown dot org, which is my foundation. And if you would like, you know, you feel so moved and generous, you can give to the call so that I can keep bringing the show uh, to as many places as I can. Um, and I have a vocal studio at the Indianapolis Opera that's in the building that the Indianapolis Opera is in. And it's the Angela Brown Voice Studio. And you can get in touch with me. I do virtual uh, voice lessons as well as in person right now, girl. We'll see what happens. <laughs> and you yeah. can get in touch with me through Indiana, indieopera.org. Awesome. Okay. Indieopera.org. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Good stuff. So we are going to, I, first of all, I want to thank you so much for being here. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say goodbye to you, but I want to go to another clip of you singing. Um, as we take, as we go out and then we come out of that, I will, I will go to our scripture, but I just want to say thank you so much. You're, you're such a light and so much life. Um, just knowing you for this short time, I'm, I'm inspired. I want to go listen to some of your music <laughs> yes. and I hope you guys thank will you so as well. Yeah, definitely. Let's broaden our perspective, broaden our horizon, educate ourselves and understand what is possible. I think if nothing else, that's what we can take from, from this conversation today. So let's go to some, another one of your songs before we go to our scripture. Our, our scripture for today comes from Psalm 96, verses two and three. Sing a new song to the Lord. Everyone on this earth, sing praises to the Lord. Sing and praise his name. Day after day announce the Lord has saved us. Tell every nation on earth, the Lord is wonderful and does marvelous things. Ah, oh, I don't know about you, but today has been an inspiration. I, I don't have anything else to say. I mean, the case has been made for creative work and, and there's no argument. There's nothing to argue. We are to sing a new song and give glory to God. There is value in us using our voices to bring him glory, to bring light into this world. And if this conversation with Angela Brown hasn't made that clear, then nothing will. So let's keep making a case for creative work, for, for pursuing our passion and not apologizing for being who we are. We're gonna continue this conversation next week. We have another fabulous woman who is doing her thing. She's an artist who uses faces for her canvas. And I can't wait for you to meet her. See you next time. Hey girl, it's a new month and time for a new theme. STEM is great, but not everybody works math problems for a living. Some of us write, sing, paint, or act, 
And this month, we're making a case for creative work. These are my favorites. Join me Saturdays at 5 on Facebook Live.